guess what I was invited to do? Hmm. The mystery box challenge that is put on by Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. I got my mystery box. Wait until you see who it's from and let's take a look at what was sent to me. Welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. I want to take a second and welcome those of you who are new to my channel, who are stopping by from all of the other amazing creators channels. Thank you so much for stopping by. What do I have going on for you for today? For those of you who don't know, Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap does a mystery box challenge. Now this challenge is full of amazing creators and you pick a name, you get a name, that's who you send a mystery box to with seven to 10 items in it that they've got to incorporate into a DIY. Somebody picked my name and guess what? I've got my box here. I picked somebody's name and she's got her box. I can't wait to see what's in this box. You'll want to click on the playlist in the description box below after this video and head on over to all of the other amazing creators channels and watch their mystery box unfold as well. For now, I'm going to quit my gabbing and you know that saying, let's jump into it and let's see what Jennifer has in store for me for today. Okay, I have not opened this yet. I was waiting because I genuinely wanted my reaction to be a sincere one and a genuine one. And so, and I was waiting for my mystery items to come. And so we'll have to open that next, but for now, <laughs> this is really gonna test my creativity. Um, she says, Kelly, I honestly had so much fun shopping for you. Please don't feel like you have to or need to use everything in the box. I hope I was able to get you at least a couple of items you haven't seen in your Dollar Tree. I can't wait to see what you create. Jennifer from A Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. That is who picked my name to send me a box. I'm not telling you who I sent a box to, but I guarantee you that when you're watching the other creators' videos, it's gonna be so obvious who sent this creator a box. <laughs> but that doesn't give it away. Okay, let's see. Oh, I think Jennifer was nice to me. Yay! We have got two three packs of the mini wooden dice. Awesome. I have not used these in a DIY yet, so this is going to be a good excuse to do that. She has sent me some of the raw wood beads and some of the oval darker beads. Great combination. And nice, some brown leather. And we've got a tin here with some twine on it, and it's got a few starfish on it a two pack of the galvanized metal tags. I have not seen these at my Dollar Tree yet. A spool of the macrame cotton twine. So this is a lighter, thicker twine than what Dollar Tree usually carries. We've got a honeycomb wired ribbon. That is actually really cool. Ooh, I'm already getting a vision of what I wanna do in the color scheme based off of this. She has sent me some of the fun new embellishments here. I haven't seen these. I saw the black tags last week, but these look like they are dry erase plaques and you get two of them together. Oh wow, that is really cool. Oh, I see something that I don't have yet. And it would be the rose gold galvanized metal plaque. And she has sent me one of these hexagon, hexa, oct is eight. So hex has got to be six, right? Hexagon, hopefully. Plaques and a hexagon frame. She has given me a lot to work with and I think that I'm going to be able to come up with something. And here we have the two challenge items that were sent by Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses. This is gonna be interesting. And again, I hope that Megan was nice to me. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, this is, <laughs> really? Oh, that's all I have. I felt this and 
that I didn't know what it was. Really? She sent me a diaper. <laughs> oh my word. Oh, she is really challenging me on this. And, ooh, what is, coconuts. Okay, plastic coconuts. We've got a two pack of the bikini top plastic coconuts and I will not be wearing them as a bikini top, but okay. So I can see incorporating these into a DIY. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I am going to sit on this for a day or two. I'm gonna ponder it. I am going to stare at all of these items and see what I can do with them. I'm gonna sleep on it because that is most definitely when I get most of my ideas is when I sleep and I will meet you back here when I am good and inspired and ready to create. Alrighty, let's start this challenge off with the hexagon pieces. I'm gonna use the larger one, which is the frame. It's got some glass in here that I don't much need, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the glass and discard it. Remove the stand here on the back. Then I'm gonna go ahead and replace the cardboard back into the frame, giving me kind of a blank canvas. Since we're allowed to dig into our stash, I did just that and grabbed some wood clothespins. I don't need the whole clothespin, I just need the wood parts of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble it. Now, if you don't wanna disassemble it and you wanna use the whole clothespin for this DIY, you can, but to keep costs down, I am taking them apart. I started off by hot gluing the clothespins to each of the points of the frame here. I figured out that once I did those points, it was so much easier to then put the clothespins in between each of the points and evenly space them and kind of angle them the way I needed to angle them. Now, this is a hexagon frame, which means it is an odd shape. It's not round. So the points on the frame, there is going to be more spacing it's going to be a bit uneven so after pondering this for a bit and those odd uneven open spaces here yeah i would just take a couple more clothespins and just hot glue them right there on top kind of disguising it i wasn't sure if it was going to look great but after i got a couple of them on i was pretty happy with how it looked and i felt like it added just a bit of character to it Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that turned out better than I thought, and I'm happy with how it looks. These clothespins, well, they're gonna get a good couple coats with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of maize. It is my favorite yellow by far. And to the center of this, why not? Let's go in with some of Hello Hobby's darker brown. It's like a cafe, don't ask me how to pronounce that next word. My tongue just won't do it but it's a nice dark espresso brown that I love. And so, yeah, this is a piece that I am just kind of creating as I go. Not really sure how it's gonna turn out, but we'll see. I think I can add this smaller hexagon plaque. It comes equipped with this aluminum welcome word. So I'm gonna set this aside because I think I can use it. Now, as you can see, I had painted it a rust brown before because like I said, this DIY, I was just kind of creating as I was going and the color just wasn't working for me. So I'm gonna go back over it with some of the dark brown. I got a couple packs of these wood dice. I think these will help add some dimension to this piece. So I went ahead and painted them brown and I'm going to just use some hot glue to adhere them to the center of this. Now, I know the paint job isn't great on this, but it's not gonna show, so I wasn't super worried about it. Gonna hit the top of these dice with some hot glue so I can then add our smaller hexagon plaque to the top. In turn, look at that, giving this piece some dimension. Hmm, this one had me a little bit stumped. The challenge item, which is a diaper. Thank you, Megan. I really pondered this for a minute. Then I decided I was just gonna go for it and disassemble this diaper. I am, I am not using it in its entirety because for the life of me, I could not figure out how to, but boy oh boy, do I have something in store for you using this diaper. I did use it. 
but I did not use the inside of it, meaning all of the cotton. And I wanna say there is like a silica type of sand in there, which would be, I guess, the super absorbent stuff. Yeah, that just kind of made a hot mess. So I went ahead and cut off the elastic and I'm really just taking this apart to utilize it for the paper portion of the diaper. Is it paper? The, the paper fabric portion of it? What is the outside of a diaper? Somebody tell me. I could probably Google it. I'm gonna Google it. Please hold. Google, what is the outside of a diaper made of? Well, now that we know that, fun fact of the day. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the lining of the diaper after I removed the cotton and the filling from it. And I'm gonna cut this into strips. I'm gonna cut it into two inch strips. And I'm hoping that I can get about three or four of them out of this. Who said you can't paint a diaper, right? You're on my channel, I paint everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the lining of this diaper because the color just isn't rustic. It isn't farmhouse and it's just not gonna work for me. So why not? There's no rule against that, right? I didn't have to use the diaper in its entirety or its color. My diaper strips are dry. I'm laughing. I really did paint diaper, but you know what? It's gonna work. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna take my strips and I'm gonna hot glue them together. Well, I'm gonna fold it in half and hot glue it closed, right? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. My painted diaper strips, they need slits in them, cause why not? When I cut the slits, I'm cutting it on the side of the strip that was folded over, not the side that was glued. And you can see that I'm not cutting all the way through the strip. I'm just making these slits and I'm gonna do that the full length of my diaper strips. And I think I did three or was it four diaper strips total? Anywho, I'm gonna do it to all my diaper strips. What am I doing with these strips that I just cut slits in? Well, I'm gonna roll it. And as I roll it, I'm gonna kind of hot glue it every now and again to keep it rolled, but you can see how I'm doing it. When I hot glue it, I'm gonna hot glue it there at the base where I glued the diaper strip together, not on the end that I cut the slits in. What is this going to be? This is going to be the center of my sunflower kind of emulating maybe sunflower seeds. I don't know, a sunflower has a darker center. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just roll all of my strips together, making one big center, or I hope it's gonna be big. We'll see. Okay, looking good so far, better than I thought, it's working. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process with my other two or three diaper strips and I'm gonna attach them to what I already rolled, just continuing on with the rolling, in turn making the center of what will be my sunflower bigger. Four diaper strips later, and this is what we're left with. Pretty cool looking, but it's not big enough. So I figured I'd add to it using the leather roll that Jennifer sent to me. And so pretty much doing the same thing that I did with the diaper paper, the diaper lighting, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my leather into strips. Now this is, I wanna say one and a half inch strips is that I'm doing. I'm really just kind of eyeballing it. And I'm gonna do the same process with these leather strips that I did with the diaper. I'm gonna fold those strips in half, hot gluing the two sides together. Why not? I'm gonna paint leather too. I want the center of my sunflower to match. So I think I have six or eight strips of leather that I got from that roll. And these two need some slits in them as well. So my thought process was how could I incorporate this diaper into the DIY and kind of disguise that it was a diaper. I knew I wouldn't be able to make the center of the sunflower large enough just using the diaper itself, but I knew that I could get it quite a bit bigger if I cut up the leather roll and did the same thing 
And so just by using the diaper in the center, making the center of the sunflower a bit tighter like it would be, and as it blooms, it gets bigger and wider, and I figured that it would work well and it would be hidden nicely in with the leather. And so once I've got my leather done, I'm gonna go ahead and just hot glue it. You can see the white there at the bottom, which is the diaper. And just by adding the leather to it, which is thicker and bigger, it is really going to widen the center of my sunflower, giving me the look that I'm going for, which is somewhat like sunflower seeds, the brown center of a sunflower. I am gonna hit the back of this with a bunch of hot glue and just place it right there in the center. Once I glued it on, I was seeing that some of the brown from the leather was coming through, some of the white from the diaper was still coming through. And so to disguise that, once it was glued on, I just went back in with some of the dark brown and decided to give the center of this a good coating, trying to hide some of the brown and the white from the leather and the diaper. All right, this is coming along, but it's missing something. I'd say a few somethings. It really needs something added to it. It needs burlap. Burlap and sunflowers, in my opinion, they go hand in hand. So I dug into my stash and I really wanted to stick with items that I had in my stash. I didn't want to run to Dollar Tree for anything for this mystery box. I just really wanted to keep the cost down and use what I had in my stash. This burlap, this isn't a tightly woven burlap. It is, I want to say on the cheaper side, it might be a Dollar Tree burlap. Went ahead, cut it into squares, and I'm gluing it around the outside on the back side of my sunflower. While I'm on the back side, again, dug into my stash because I need to hang this up. See, it's looking great. Once I got all that burlap on, I'm super happy with how that looks even on the back side. Wait until I flip it over. But first, we've got to add a hanger. I keep my sawtooth hangers when I take them off of things because you never know when you're going to need them. I'm going to place this on the back side so that way I can hang this out on my porch. For those of you who don't know, my summer porch decor is sunflowers, so this is going to be perfect for that. Love it! Look at how cute this looks! But my yellow was a bit too stark for my liking, so I'm going to go in with some of my Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain, and I'm going to darken up these, I guess, sunflower petals, sunflower clothespin sticks. Yeah, and I'm gonna rustic them up a bit. It was still too plain for my liking. I can't help it. I needed to add stitching to the center of this because it was just missing that quilted, handcrafted look that stitching gives to a DIY piece. Can't forget the aluminum welcome. It's gonna work perfect for the center of this. Didn't have bumblebees in my stash, but I did have these cute ladybugs that are from Dollar Tree. I got these probably a couple of years ago in the floral department because they were so stinking cute. Never knew what I was gonna do with them, but I thought that they were such a fun addition to this sunflower wreath, adding just a bit of color just the bit of color that it needed. Okay, let's take a look at this hung up on a tree outside. Yeah, I really do have a nail on my tree, but this is where I ended up placing it right above this couch on my front porch. I've got a couple more DIYs in store for you. The items that Jen sent to me, I was really feeling the inspiration. And so I was excited to continue DIYing with the pieces. She sent me this rose gold galvanized plaque, which I was super bummed that I had to paint over because my Dollar Tree has never gotten the rose gold or the black ones in. We just have the galvanized ones, but that's okay. Nonetheless, I'm going to give this a good coating of that Hello Hobby Brown, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Now, what to do with these beads? How can I incorporate them into a DIY? Well, we've got this coconut. There we go. Perfect. Beads, coconut, done. Just kidding. I stuck the beads in the coconut just so they don't roll away. Taking some twine, I'm gonna go ahead and string these beads using a combination of the raw wood beads in each size and the dark wood beads. And I am going to do four strands of the same beads. 
How lucky is this that this plaque has four holes already in it, which is gonna be perfect for these four strands of beads, one on each corner. What to do, what to do with the coconut? Well, it's got a few holes. It's got a couple on the sides, one here, but I need one on this side and I need one in the center here. Just by taking the tip of my hot glue gun that's nice and hot, I can easily puncture a hole through these coconuts because they're plastic. So it's just kind of melting a hole right there, right where I need it. That was easy. I need one in the bottom as well. Macrame twine, kind of like in the color. I think it'll go well with the raw wood beads. It is a bit looser of a woven twine, I guess, than regular twine. And since it will go so well with the raw wood beads in this DIY, I figured I can incorporate it by making a tassel of sorts. And so I went ahead and just measured out the length that I wanted it to be, made it, I wanna say, five strands thick. I'm gonna take another piece and just kind of place it in the middle there because this is gonna be the hanger for the tassel but we don't need to tie it off just yet. Just by folding my bunch of twine over it just like so, then taking another piece and wrapping it right there at the top, making it tight, we have just now made a tassel. And because this twine unravels so easily, I figured I'd just go ahead and unravel it, making it look even more like a tassel. Perfect. This tassel, it's gonna go right in the bottom of this coconut, feeding the twine through that bottom hole that I made with my hot glue gun. I'm gonna attach my coconut with a tassel to my galvanized plaque that has the four strands of beads attached to each corner. Now, I know you probably think I'm almost done with this DIY, but I so am not. There is more coming to this piece that I absolutely love. This one was probably my favorite DIY of all of them that I did with this mystery box. And I'd say it probably ranks up there with some of my all-time favorite DIYs, if I'm being honest. To the top of this, I feel like it needs a birdhouse. I picked up this birdhouse from Michaels. I actually had three of them in my stash because the girls and I love to do birdhouses for the backyard. And so I just snatched one up to add to this DIY. I'm going with the color scheme that I've been going with all summer from my front porch because this is going to go on my front porch and that is the color scheme of sunflowers if you didn't catch on to that in the first DIY. So for the roof it's going to be in the dark brown and the house itself is going to be my favorite yellow, the maize yellow by Waverly. Fun fact about Kelly, for those of you who are new to my channel, I put stitching on everything. I do, because I love stitching. It adds really that country quilted, handcrafted look to a DIY, and I feel like a lot of times it finishes it off. And so to this birdhouse, there will be a fun amount of stitching added. Let's not forget about this ribbon. I need a smaller bow, so I just went ahead and folded the ribbon in half and made myself a bow. Only I am not feeling this color. This yellow has a green undertone to it. It's not gonna work. If I can paint a diaper and I can paint leather, why not paint ribbon? So I'm gonna slap on a good couple coats of the Waverly Maze and make it suit this DIY. I'm gonna make it work. Ah yes, much better. Now for these wood pieces. These make for great embellishments. Although the theme was a little bit hard to work with, I still wanted to try and incorporate them into my DIY somehow. And I think I did an okay job doing it because this star in this thought bubble, I think will be the perfect addition to my birdhouse. And I'll top it off with my painted yellow bow and a couple ladybugs as well. This is such a fun piece, and I really enjoyed not only having a bird feeder and a birdhouse, but it worked perfect with my front porch decor. 
I've got a tin pot with some twine. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this twine because I don't need it. Believe it or not, I don't need it for this DIY. Surprise, surprise, right? I'm gonna give it a couple coats with some of Waverly's white chalk paint. I've still got one more coconut to use. I don't know about you, but I think this coconut needs a good couple coats of some of Waverly's Crimson Red. That's what I think. Using one of Dollar Tree's medium size round sponge dabbers, I'm gonna go ahead and add some white dots to the top of this red coconut. Does anybody know where I'm going with this yet? Then I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and put a ton of hot glue on the bottom of this pot so I can then place my red and white coconut on top making a mushroom. How fun is that? Now, because there were stars in the embellishment pack that Jen sent me and there was a star on this pot already, I painted three of the wood embellishment stars red and just thought that it'd be a fun addition to this mushroom pot that's gonna go in my garden. Let's go take a look. This was such a fun, easy piece, a mushroom to add to my garden with either stars or I turn it around without stars. It would be fun to add to a miniature fairy garden too. I've got one last DIY for you using some of the items remaining like these dry erase plaques. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over using a giant popsicle stick. I'm gonna use that to attach the two plaques side by side. Now it's almost July, right? Do you know what that means? It means that in July, we are allowed to do DIYs for Christmas in July. And so that's what this DIY is gonna be. Once I've attached the two plaques together, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good coating with what's left of my Mod Podge there. I was really scraping the bottom of it even after I added water to it. Dug into some of that fabric that I had from Dollar Tree around Christmas time. This was a fat quarter roll that Dollar Tree actually had. It was super cute, never used it at Christmas time. So I'm gonna cover these plaques with this fabric Give it another good coating of some Mod Podge to really adhere the fabric onto these plaques. Once that Mod Podge and fabric is good and dry, taking a nice fresh blade in my razor, using the plaque as a guide, I'm gonna cut off all of that extra fabric. I had a bit of that honeycomb ribbon left, but because this is a Christmas in July DIY, honeycomb ribbon isn't gonna work. So yep, I'm gonna give it a good couple coats with some of that crimson red from Waverly and make it work. Who says you can't paint ribbon? If you've got ribbon on hand, but it isn't quite the color you need, slap on some paint, why not? To the front of these plaques that are covered in this adorable Christmas tree fabric, I'm gonna place my ribbon just as if I would place it if I were wrapping a present, because every present needs ribbon, right? Why not? A decorative present does. Now, because I got two sets of these wood dice, I figured, you know what? I want my present to stand up and these wood dice are gonna work perfect for that just by hot gluing them onto the back of the present here. And these galvanized tags are perfect. I did cheat a bit and used my Cricut with some of Dollar Tree's black vinyl to cut out the words happy holidays so I could put those on the tag, gluing them together, just adding some hot glue here to the top. I can easily attach them to my present what a fun decor piece this is turning out to be, right? Don't much need the twine. Again, surprise, surprise, but it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that and finish this present off with a painted red bow with what was left of my honeycomb yellow ribbon. What a fun, easy piece this was. I look forward to displaying this this Christmas. I hope you all enjoyed what I did with my mystery box contents. Jennifer, thank you so much for not being mean to me. You were super nice. And Megan, you challenged me with those challenge items and it was a fun addition to my DIYs. I hope you all enjoyed seeing my box unfold. Don't forget to click on the playlist down below and head on over to all the other amazing creators to see how their mystery box unfolds. 
Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, and most of all,